Hi, Bats. No. <laughs> okay, just start filming now, okay? Are you ready? Wait, wait, wait. Is the mic connected? Yes. The mic is connected. Okay. Document, everything is handheld is on the document. No, no, not in this, not in the interview. Yes. Is the mic Michael, film the chaos. Okay, yeah, just film the chaos. You want to sit down? You have to. Someone sit down. Yeah, Mike, it's not working. You guys are doing great. You know, Bill doesn't have any advice. I don't think any of us saw it coming. When we made Hell Hath No Fury, I don't think any of us expected to uh, impact us as much as it did. It was it was supposed to be a goodbye to some people and in a way a love letter to the BFI, which had meant so much to so many of us. And it, it turned out to be a little more than a love letter. Uh, that's, that's a lie. It was less than a love letter, more dense. Not directly in the sense that uh, we didn't intend for it to be dense was freedom, stupid, funny, odd freedom. It was never supposed to be dense. But now looking back, selfish ignoring those who, who paid good money to be here and have no link to Hell Hath No Fury like, like Toby or Lewis or Manus, you know. Looking back, it is dense because it is, it is representative of a shift, the beginning of this, um, this, <laughs> this spiral that has only reached its stupid, um, Odd, free, and definitely not funny climax. The weird thing about that is we didn't get to film the climax because it was it was real and it was a mistake and, and we didn't. It shouldn't have happened. And um, hell, hell hath no fury. Being being labeled a love letter, you could you could say it was more like a more like a suicide note signed by the very people that it would harm, and that would be, that would be more accurate. As pretentious and edgy as that is, that that would be more accurate. Once you once you make something that you care about, it's difficult really difficult to to care about the rest i guess that's what happened we fell spiraled i i like to think of it as, as this road right this this wide road this real wide road you know it's it's maybe 20 miles across something like that and and there's a single nail in this road maybe 3 miles in 6 miles down something like that but you you don't know where the nail is you know but you know you're going to hit it it's there and you're going to hit it Hell Hath No Fury was, was that nail, one of them, at least. Today, the day this was written, not the day it's recorded or released, was, was another one because we, we broke a camera. Uh, when, we made, when we first made Hell Hath No Fury, we'd never been so free. There was always so much planning and, and precision and, and, and just... I mean, we storyboarded. <laughs> Isn't we we storyboarded? We got a we got a taste of freedom. We wanted more. Too much, you could say greed. We got greedy for artistic freedom. If you couldn't see that, I was doing quotation marks. That that we somehow forgot ourselves, our privileges, our stances <clears throat> in this world, our ability to be here in and of itself, representative of that privilege. We forgot who we were and and what we were doing in search of what we thought was a good time. Little hedonists, we were. We were nothing. Hell Hath No Fury led to the most chaotic, self-destructive, yet most impressive run of films that the BFI family film fans have <laughs> saw, I reckon. I really do. I mean, <clears throat> Devil Dealings always comes to mind. That was when we really began to lose it. Hell Hath No Fury faced some censorship, the names, you know, but Devil Dealings was actually cut down. I think we took the challenges. How can we provoke even more? The, the tutors are here to help us to see to our privileged needs for vapid expression, but we wanted to provoke them. It was about authority, I guess. When you're a teen, it's all about authority. You want respect. You want to be treated like an adult, but you still want to retain that privilege of, of being young. Uh, pathetic, I, I know, but I don't know if I'm really thinking about what I'm saying. I mean, <laughs> we broke a camera today. I, it sort of just went from there. Films that were more and more manic, le less and less planned, ideas flung about like irrelevant snowflakes, the only value being in the selfishness of the artistic visions. Even this one, it only means something to a couple of people. I'm sorry about that, I mean, I really am. Well, Devil Dealings lost about eight minutes of footage. It was inappropriate stuff, jokes, you know, nothing special. And then there was the Ballad of the Red Dwarf, I want to say. That that was a film that began production. And the last week we realized that all the internal bickering and indulgence was getting us absolutely nowhere. So we filmed a five-minute short in one take and called it a day, the Ballad of the Van Poppins or something or the other. Had we ever been so lazy? Had we ever wasted so much precious time and money at this thing that we used to respect? I don't know. God knows. Uh, that was that was bad, but I think the real icing on the cake, which which came before the ballad, 
would have to be the fabled, <laughs> fabled Aranciata, a feature-length Im- improvised film shot at the BFI. It was feature-length. It actually was. But the final available product on YouTube is only 11 minutes. People complained about the compromise, but I guess it was never really seen from the perspective of, of the employee who would have to oversee the uploading of a feature and would also have to watch the whole thing to make sure it was fine to post. People have lives outside the BFI, you know, that, that was, of course we all knew that because our lives in the BFI existed individually. We were, are different people. That's just how it is. Nobody's honest with themselves, even alone. I'm, I'm quoting Reef here. Maybe this was filmed. Can we cut to it? But it's, it's difficult to admit that we cherish what happens here as more than just learning about film. It's part of our lives. Maybe that's too far. But it's true, and, and some people are gone, so their that life in, inside the BFI is also gone. And there's no point in looking back on it. Every moment is a memory anyways, but that doesn't change the fact that we will continue to look back on it. Just because there's no logical point, there's no overarching belief. I, I, I can still picture watching a man dance so hard he breaks his rib. Is this our goodbye? We're not leaving. Well, we're leaving an era because our, our destructive, narcissistic pieces have finally exploded out of the screen. I don't know if I'm acting anymore. So we want to make a film about that. And we broke a camera today. And <laughs> as we have less and less time at the BFI, you know, it's not very long until some of us pass that oddly ugly age. It seems that we, we care less. It's easier to let go of something when you don't put value to it. But that but only proves how much we really valued it in the first place. So much so that the, the idea of losing it was, it was scary enough to make ourselves worse people just so we wouldn't have to face that idea. That doesn't justify the fact that we were worse people. But it... We, we were willing to harm our, our personas and who we thought we were because we didn't want to lose this thing. I mean, this writing, is it, it, this speech, this voiceover, whatever you want to call it, it's from a singular perspective. I keep using we. Even in writing, I'm acting. Do I regret anything I can't tell? Do I feel guilty? Sure. Do I wish I could do one more take, one more draft, one more anything? No, yes. But I don't want to waste my shooting stars on it. I mean, frankly, I don't want to leave. Frankly, the consequences of being too free, of not putting value to the thing that we cared about have left me untethered. Change is inevitable. It's a nail in the road. Sometimes you're forced to change. Other times you realize you have to. Is it exploitative, pretentious and selfish to make this film, to record some of the things we've recorded, to talk the way we talk, to live the way we live, to feel the way I feel? Which is naive and and daft and ingenuine, yes. Yes, it is. That's all there is to it. I'm afraid. We're afraid. Hell hath no fury like time. You know, what a, what a crock of shit. God, this is full of itself. So I, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to go all out and be as pretentious and self-serving as possible. Po- possible. And, and quote a poem that, that I, I haven't fully read and, and don't fully understand. We are the hollow men. We are the stuffed men leaning together. Now let's jump a bit to the end. Um, th- this, this is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, but a whimper.